Welcome to Dweller of the Dark. We are a channel honoring the yellowed and blackened bones of many prominent authors. We will be digging up several obscure, strange, and forgotten authors who influenced many of the great horror, science fiction, and fantasy writers today. More tales of the horrifying, obscure, strange, and forgotten are climbing out of the tombs. Check out our links below for more information. Subscribe, comment, like, donate, or I'll send the devil of Black Bayou to rip your head off as we did the like button. Send us ghoulish delights for the Skull and Bones collection. Your pound of writer's flesh will feed our ghouls for now. Children of Horror, Legion of Ghouls. Tonight, we present Hugh B. Cave's Howling Tale. Two were left. First written in 1955. Enjoy. Two were left by Hugh B. Cave. On the third night of hunger, Noni thought of the dog. Nothing lived upon that floating island of ice except himself and the dog. When the ice broke up, Noni had lost his sled, his food, his furs, even his knife. He had saved only Naimuk, his great devoted husky. And now the two, completely alone, marooned on the ice, eyed each other warily. Noni's love for Naimuk was real, very real. It was as real as hunger and cold nights and the gnawing pain of his injured leg. But the men of his village killed their dogs when food was scarce, didn't they? And they killed them without thinking about it twice. He told himself that Naimuk, when hungry enough, would begin to seek food one of us will soon be devouring the other, Noni thought. So, he could not kill the dog with his bare hands. Namuk was powerful and much less tired than he. A weapon then was needed. Noni took off his mittens and unstrapped the brace from his injured leg. When he had hurt his leg a few weeks before, he had made the brace from bits of harness and two thin strips of iron. He kneeled and wedged one of the iron strips into a crack in the ice. Then he began to rub the other iron strip against it with firm, slow strokes. Naimuk watched him, and it seemed to Noni that the dog's eyes glowed more brightly. He kept working, trying not to remember why. The strip of iron had an edge now. It had begun to take shape. By daylight, his task was completed. He had finished making a knife. Noni pulled the knife from the ice and felt its edge. The sun's glare reflected from it. Its brightness stabbed at his eyes and, for an instant, blinded him momentarily. Noni forced himself to call the dog. Here, Namuk, he called softly. The dog suspiciously watched him. Come here, Noni called. Namuk came closer. Noni saw 
fear in the animal's gaze. He could see hunger and suffering in the animal's labored breathing and awkward movements. Noni's heart wept. He hated himself and fought against it. Closer Naimuk came, aware of Noni's intentions. Now Noni felt a thickening in his throat. He saw the dog's eyes, and they were pools of suffering. Now, now is the time to strike. A great sob shook Noni's kneeling body. He cursed the knife. He swayed blindly and threw the knife far away from him. With empty hands outstretched, he stumbled toward the dog and fell. The dog growled as he circled the boy's body. And now Noni was sick with fear. In flinging away the knife, he had left himself defenseless. He was too weak to crawl after it now. He was at Naimuk's mercy, and Naimuk was hungry. The dog had circled him and was creeping up from behind him. Noni heard a rattle in the animal's throat. Noni shut his eyes, praying that the attack might be swift. He felt the dog's feet against his leg, the hot rush of Naimuk's breath against his neck. A scream gathered in the boy's throat. Then he felt the dog's hot tongue licking his face. Noni's eyes opened, crying softly. He thrust out an arm and drew the dog's head down against his own. The plane came out of the south an hour later. Its pilot was a young man in the coast patrol. He looked down and saw the large floating iceberg and he saw something flashing. The sun was gleaming off of something shiny which moved. His curiosity aroused. The pilot circled and flew lower. Now he saw, in the shadow of the mountain of ice, a dark, still shape that appeared to be human. Or were there two shapes? He set his seaplane down on the water and investigated. There were two shapes a boy and a dog. The boy was unconscious but alive. The dog whined feebly but was too weak to move. The gleaming object which had caught the pilot's attention was a crudely made knife. It was stuck point down into the ice a short distance away and was quivering in the wind. Thank you for listening. Have a great night.